There was this one time when I had to lead worship and I was really tired and I just thought to myself I will not be able to do this but as we got on stage we could experience God's power, God's love just manifesting and uh, every tiredness, every weakness was gone away. And There was also this time where during worship people just got caught up in visions. I saw this beautiful angel standing in front of me and all of a sudden God showed me three different instances in my life where this very same angel was present. So the beauty of um, the presence of God is it's so tangible, it's so alive that when we sit around a table and study the Word of God, we've had people come, they've been curious of what we're doing, they join in. And it's not, uh, it's, it's not just conversations, it, it starts changing lives. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong. As always, it's our joy to come your way and spend this time in the Word of God and pray together with you. The glory of God, it's a theme that we find in both the Testaments, in the Old Testament uh, as well as in the New Testament. Uh, we find many things stated about the glory of God, about the God of glory and how God wants to release that upon the earth and wants his people to experience, to be carriers, to be dispensers of his glory here on earth. And so what we're going to do over the next several weeks is delve into this subject on the glory of God, specifically from the aspect of how do we manifest the glory of God? How do we do what God's called us to do, to be carriers and to be dispensers of the glory of God on the earth. And so we are entitling this series, Manifesting His Glory. And we're going to break it down over several weeks and delve into the subject a little at a time uh, as we seek to understand about the glory of God. And uh, what we see happening in the church today is that the church is awakening uh, to under, not only understanding about the glory of God, but beginning to flow in it, begin, beginning to uh, experience it, and beginning to manifest it. And, and I, I would say we are maybe just scratching at the surface of this whole area of, that God has actually kept aside for us. And uh, there is so much more. There are greater realms and greater uh, areas and, uh, of the glory of God that we are still exploring, we are still trying to understand. And uh, we believe that as we progress, uh, we are going to see more and more of the glory of God being released upon His people, being released through His people, so that God can be put on display here on earth. So let's begin this, uh, on this episode by talking about the glory of His person. The fact that God uses the word glory in reference to himself, in reference to who he is, in reference to his own person, and to talk about himself, he uses this word glory. We find many, many scriptures, of course, throughout the Old, through, the, through the Old Testament and in the New Testament, where God, referring to himself, the substance of who he is, he uses this word glory. Now, in the Old Testament, one of the most common words used for glory is the Hebrew word kabot. And in the New Testament, one of the most common Greek words that is, that is used for the word glory is the word doxa. And most Bible scholars uh, understand that the Hebrew kabod and the Greek doxa are literally speaking about the same thing. And, and in a sense, they mean the same thing. They are referring to the substance of who God is. They are referring to His brightness, His brilliance, His greatness and a, a display of who he is. In John the 17th chapter and in verse 5, as the Lord Jesus was praying his high priestly prayers, as it is often referred to, and as, as he was talking to the Father, he said this, he said, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So Jesus is referring to some something, a substance of God, and he says, I, I want that. Father, you please restore that to me. Glorify me with yourself, with the glory, with the doxa, with the substance, the brilliance, the greatness, which I had with you before the world was. 
So, of course, in his incarnation, when Jesus came into this world, he left this aspect of the, uh, of the glory of God, the doctrine of God. He left that behind in heaven. And so here on earth, he's praying to the Father. And then he's saying, Father, I want to come into that place where I'm back in that glory once again, where that glory is back in me once again. And so he says, glorify me with that glory which I had with you before the world began. So what do we understand? That God in, 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 in his being, uh, he dwells and he's, he, his substance is referred to as glory. And this is the very substance that Jesus was talking about in John 17, 5. And then in the 24th verse of the same chapter, Jesus prays, he says, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. So he's praying to the Father and he's saying, Father, I want to come back into, I want to come back into that original state of having that glory, that, that substance of God. And not only that, I'm also praying for all of these people who believe in me. I want them to be with me and I want them to see me in glory, to see this substance, to actually ex encounter, to actually experience and to behold this glory that I have. So he's making sure that we are, as believers, we are going to be able to see him in that glory, that substance. So like we said, that the word glory is used in the Bible often to refer to uh, the splendor, the greatness, the brilliance, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the power, the strength of someone. And often in, in this context, it's about God himself and, and talking about the greatness of God. Now, there are other uses of the word glory, which we will uh, refer to in coming episodes. Glory is also used in some places in the Bible to refer to heaven itself, the place where God dwells in heaven. Uh, glory is also used, uh, as you will see, uh, to refer to the tangible expressions of his presence. So when his presence, when God's presence is expressed in our earthly realm, in our natural realm, and there are visible expressions of that, we, uh, the word glory is often used even in that context. So. What can we say about the glory of God? If you want to have a working definition of this word glory, uh, especially in the context of what we are talking about, uh, keep in mind that the word glory is, of course, used uh, in many different contexts. But as we, uh, in the context of what we are talking about, as the, of the glory of God, uh, what, is, what, what could be a working definition? I would like to define it this way, that the glory of God is an expression of the nature of God and of the works of God. The glory of God, when we use the word glory, we are saying it is an expression of who God is and what he does. It's an expression of his nature, his character, his attributes, his virtues. And it's also an expression of what he does, his power, his strength, his might, uh, his, uh, the displays of his miracles and so on. So when we use the word glory, we are talking about an expression of God's nature and of his works, a display of who God is and what he does. In Acts, the seventh chapter, and the second verse, uh, as uh, uh, Stephen is talking about the story, narrating the whole thing that God dealt, the way God dealt with his people, he says this, he says, Brethren and fathers, listen, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran. So he's saying, the God of glory, and you find, you'll find this phrase many times in the Bible, the God of glory, the God who is the possessor of all this infinite splendor and greatness and brilliance, the God of glory. So God himself is referred to by this phrase, the God of glory. There are other phrases that we find in the Bible uh, which are talking about God and glory. For instance, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 17, as, as Peter is narrating the experience on the Mount of Transfiguration, he says this, he says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So here Peter is referring to the Father as the one with the excellent glory. He's using the phrase excellent glory, meaning 
This is glory in all of its excellence and splendor and greatness. That there are not enough adjectives, not enough words for us to even capture uh, the greatness of God, of who He is and what He does. And so Peter just uses this phrase, excellent glory, referring to the Father. And so Peter says that the Father, the one who is the excellent glory, he spoke about his own son who had been, who is now incarnate, the son of God, Jesus on earth. And he, he speaks about him and he says, this is my beloved son, listen to him. So here God the Father is, is, is referred to as the excellent glory. You also find that uh, God is referred to as the one uh, who is the God of glory. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17, the apostle Paul writes, he says, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, uh, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So he, God is called the Father of glory. Uh, he's Father, but He's also this Father of glory, meaning this Father who's, uh, whose substance uh, who is so brilliant, is so great. Uh, our minds cannot even understand. Our words cannot describe how great, how powerful, how infinite He is. And Jesus, once again, Jesus himself refers to the glory of the Father. This is in Matthew 16 and verse 27. But Jesus says, The Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his own work. So again, he's talking about him coming in the glory of his Father. So when Jesus comes back the, uh, the second time, in his second coming, He's going to come and that there is going to be a visible display of the greatness, the brilliance, the infinite power of God himself, the glory of the Father. So the word glory, therefore, captures, or is, is, captures the substance of God. It is the uh, divine attributes of God. It is the omnipresence of God. It is the omnipotence of God. And it is the omniscience of God uh, being expressed uh, to us. Uh, it's being made, made visible to us. It's the glory of God. Now, some things that we can say about the glory of God is this, that in the glory of God, there is no distance and there is no time. See, God, uh, he, he lives outside of time, what we call as eternity. For us, we use a language that tries to capture uh, this infinite duration of time, eternity past, eternity future. Because for us, we live in time. And, uh, but God, who dwells in glory, He dwells outside of time. So in the glory of God, there is no time, there is no distance. God, uh, uh, as a being, He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He, he knows everything about what, uh, this vast expanse of this universe. We dwell in time, and we dwell by location. But God doesn't. So in the glory of God, we can say this that there is no time, there is no distance. It is, an ex it, is, it is the realm in which God lives. It is the substance of God. It is the expression of who God is, of His nature, and of His attributes. So what we want to do here is as we journey in this series, we're going to understand more and more about the glory of God. What we find very interesting is this, that on the one hand, God says in His Word, I am the Lord, and my glory I will not give to another. And yet God has purposed that He would release His glory to people and to certain places, if you will, through which He wants His glory to be displayed. So He would not share His glory, yet He would cause others to be carriers and displayers and dispensers of his glory. When he says, I will not share my glory, there is nobody else who can step into that realm and uh, dwell equal with God and become possessor of that substance dwelling together with God. Nobody else can. So he says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not share with anybody else. But on the other hand, we see in Scripture, which we will see in the coming episodes, is that this God of glory, who is the possessor of this uh, substance, this glory, he says that he wants to release his glory upon his people 
so that his people can now become carriers of his very substance and, and displayers of his very substance, of his glory. That does not in any way cause us to become co-equal with God. We don't become God just because he causes us to be carriers and displayers and dispensers of his glory. But just to imagine, just to consider the fact that this God of glory, this Father of glory, this God who is so infinite would say, I want to release my glory, of course, in measures that we can contain and measures that we can handle. He said, I want to release that glory upon the earth. I want to release that glory upon my people. I want my people now to put my glory on display on the earth. That is a very, that is a very fascinating area for us to explore. And what we are trying to understand is, if God has expressed that in the scripture, then that is his desire. And we must come into alignment with that. We must come into agreement with that and say, okay, God, if you want your glory to be seen upon your people, if you are the father of glory who wants your children to carry that glory, then what must we do? What would it, what would it be like to be carriers of the glory of God? What causes us to step in to that glory? What causes us to become dispensers and displayers of that glory? What, how, what should we do to step into that realm and actually bring that realm into our realm, into the earth? These are things we're going to talk about in the coming weeks. And uh, it, it is a, definitely an exciting area, and yet it is also an area where we're simply just beginning to understand and beginning to move. And uh, we just want to encourage you to stay with us uh, up in the weeks ahead as we uh, dwell, delve into the subject further. The word glory means a manifestation, an expression of who God is and what He does. His splendor put on display. God wants His glory to be seen through His people. He wants His glory to be seen through you. We were designed by God to manifest His glory. So living a life that manifests His glory is the normal life. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And uh, this was just an introduction to this uh, series that we're doing on manifesting His glory. Uh, as we uh, keep moving forward, we're going to explore the subject further. We want to encourage you to invite your friends and others who might be interested to come and, and, and listen to this entire series. And you begin to study the Word of God as well uh, on the glory of God. As we pray, uh, we want to believe God that we will not only uh, receive revelation, about the, and, and grow in the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, uh, try to understand more about it. But we also want to begin to experience the glory of God and, and, and begin to uh, uh, really see manifestations of His glory. So as we pray each week together, I want us to begin to experience it and experience manifestations of His glory uh, together. And I'm sure we will. Let's pray together before we close. Father, we thank You. For this amazing truth of God, that you, the Father of glory, you, the God of glory, you who dwell outside of time in glory, that you would want that to be upon your people, and you want you would want that to be released in our midst. And so, Father, right now in Jesus' name, I pray for the release of your glory, even upon those who are watching, God. Let them experience, Father, the tangible manifestation of your glory, bringing healing, bringing deliverance. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that healings will take place right now where people are watching supernaturally, that bodies be healed, that every spear of infirmity be driven out, that every work of the devil be destroyed, that the glory of God be seen upon your people. Lord, let it come upon them in their workplaces. Let it come upon them in their homes. Let it come upon them in their marriages. Let it come upon them, upon their children, Lord God. Let the glory of the Lord be seen upon your people. Let there be visible expressions of your glory, God. Father, we pray even now, Lord, in the atmosphere where they're dwelling, where they live, God, 
that the glory of God will begin to release supernatural signs, wonders, miracles in their midst of God. Even as people watch this program, we pray that they will experience the glory of God. We thank you, Father. We ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to fill us with the knowledge of the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We invite you to visit our church website, www.apcwo.org, where we provide several free resources, including MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and free publications that you can download and use. You can also call, email, or write to us to request your free printed copy of our publications. Please feel free to share your comments and prayer requests when you contact us. I have a calling to be salt and light. I'm part of a family that empowers me to fulfill this commission. I have a job, but then I was always passionate to study the Word. We are students from different walks of life. My potential is best tapped in an environment like this. Where I get the opportunity to reach out and to minister. A culture where there's supernatural impartation through anointed leaders. I can now aim for excellence because that is God's beautiful design. I am equipped to impact. Come. Discover. Fulfill. The ABC Babel College offers a two-year diploma course in English and short-term courses in other regional languages. For inquiries about the course and other details, please do get in touch with us on our toll-free number 1-800-300-00998, mobile number 99457-09777 or landline number 080-6561-0823. You can also email us at contact at apcwo.org. You can download the application form from our website, apcwo.org slash Bible College.